This will be the fifth installment of my Digital Revolution video series. This time, we're going to talk about the precision of the amplitude measurements of our digital samples, which is based on the bit depth of an instrument's digitizer. If you missed episodes one through four, uh, check those out first before watching this one. I'll leave a link up here. And when you're all caught up, meet me back here so we can level up those UT skills. As we discussed in previous installments, the original analog waveform is sampled along the time base at a regular interval, which is determined by the instrument's digitization frequency. Each sample point contains time and amplitude information. Uh, the amplitude info is dictated by the bit depth of the instrument's digitizer. And depending on the settings we use, we can get a digital representation of the waveform that either has low resolution and fidelity or one that has high resolution and fidelity. Um, in the previous installments, again, we discussed precision as it relates to digitization frequency and sampling rates. This time around, we are gonna talk about amplitude precision as it relates to the bit depth of our digitizer. Uh, the bit depth refers to the range and quantity of binary numbers available to represent possible amplitude values. Uh, the more possible amplitude values, the better our amplitude resolution and signal to noise ratio will be. Uh, so some common bit depths in UT testing are 8-bit, 10-bit, and 16-bit, and there are others out there. Um, an example, 8-bit means 2 to the 8th power, or 256 possible amplitude values. Uh, higher bit depths would result in even more possible values. So if I add one bit, that doubles the outcome. If I add two bits, it quadruples the outcome, and so on. Um, higher bit depths also come at a cost, slower scanning speeds and larger data files. As we discussed previously, the original analog waveform is sampled along the time base at a regular interval, which is determined by the digitization frequency. Each analog to digital conversion results in a digital sample, and each sample point contains time and amplitude information. Uh, as you can see here, not every sample point lands directly on one of those horizontal lines. Uh, these horizontal lines represent possible amplitude values. If a sample does not land on a possible amplitude value, then its amplitude will be erroneously rounded up or down to the nearest possible location. The number of possible amplitude values is dictated by the bit depth of the instrument. The more possible values that we have, the better our precision will be. And let's look at a few examples. So uh, for this example, imagine that I have a very low bit rate, which would result in a small number of possible amplitude values, making my precision very coarse. Uh, there's a large interval between possible amplitudes. The digital version of the waveform is drawn out through a process called quantization, as represented by these purple lines. Note that the amplitude of each purple line is not perfectly centered with the location of each sample. Uh, this would result in something that we call quantization error and noise, which reduces our signal to noise ratio. The accuracy of the amplitude that gets recorded for each sample is based on the bit depth of the instrument. And again, bit depth determines how many possible amplitudes the system is capable of recording. Uh, now let's imagine that I increase my number of possible amplitude values by using a higher bit depth. Um, again, not every sample lands directly on a possible amplitude, so there will still be some rounding error, but the interval between possible values is getting smaller, meaning that my quantization error will be less severe. And uh, now we've increased the number of possible amplitude values even more by using a higher bit depth. Again, not every sample lands directly on a possible value, so there will still be some error, but the interval between possible values is getting smaller and smaller, uh, meaning my quantization error also gets smaller. And then, as you can imagine, if we increase my bit depth and my digitization frequency, the digital version of the waveform will get closer and closer to matching the original analog. But with more precision, well, you guessed it, uh, the result is a larger data file and a slower scanning speed. Uh, so now we're gonna discuss some of the common amplitude uh, digitizer bit depths that you might see in the industry. 8-bit is a common value on many conventional UT instruments. 8-bit, uh, again, means 2 to the 8th power, or 256 possible amplitude values. If you use an RF display, uh, the values are split between the positive and the negative portions. 
If using a full rectification, all those values are positive, and zero counts as a positive amplitude either way. Uh, these typically saturate at 100% full screen, which means high amplitude signals like lack of fusion will be well above the saturation point. Uh, not really a big deal if you can just turn the gain down a little bit to find the peak, but if you're recording data, anything over 100 will be saturated, making sizing and amplitude assessments difficult. 100% um, saturation divided by 256 possible amplitude values gives me 0.4 of a percent of an interval between possible amplitude values if using a rectified A scan. 10 bit was a common value on many of the previous generation phased array instruments, like the MX2. Uh, 10 bit means 2 to the 10th power, or 1024 possible amplitude values. If using an RF display, the values are split between the positive and negative side. Uh, or using full rectification, the values are all positive. 0% uh, counts as a positive amplitude value either way. Uh, these typically saturate at about 200% full screen height, which means high amplitude signals like lack of fusion have a little bit more headroom before they become saturated, but still, they are often above 200% of screen. 200% uh, saturation divided by 1,024 possible amplitude values gives you 0.2 of a percent of interval between possible amplitudes on rectified A scans. Uh, this would result in a higher saturation point and better amplitude precision than the 8-bit system. 16-bit is a common value on most of the current generation phased array instruments like the X3 and the new Topaz and Gecko and Veo. 16-bit uh, means 2 to the 16th power, or 65,536 possible amplitude values. Again, if I'm using RF, they're split between the positive and negative side. If I'm using full rectification, the values are all positive. 0% counts as a positive amplitude value either way. These are capable of saturating at 800% full screen height, which means high amplitude signals like lack of fusion are much less likely to be saturated. 800% uh, saturation divided by 65,536 possible amplitude values gives you 0 0.012 of a percent of an interval between possible amplitudes on rectified A scans. This is far greater amplitude precision, meaning that for even signals with incredibly low amplitudes like full matrix capture elementary A scans that we need for TFM, there is still a ton of precision possible. Each digital sample that we save will occupy a certain amount of file space, and that's gonna also be based on the bit depth. Uh, there are eight bits and one byte of data. Uh, if you take your bit depth and divide it by eight, you'll figure out how many bytes per sample your file size will be. So an eight bit system, each sample is one byte of data. On a 10 bit system, each sample is 1.25 bytes of data. On a 16 bit system, each sample is two bytes of data. Uh, the file size on a 16-bit system will be double the file size on an 8-bit for otherwise identical setups. Um, all these possible amplitudes are getting recorded whether a sample lands there or not. Um, and if you couple a high digitization frequency with a really high bit depth, uh, you'll get really, really big file sizes. It takes X amount of time to save each sample, so as your digitizing accuracy increases, your acquisition rates will decrease. Uh, data compression, aka subsampling, is one way that we can limit excessive file sizes. But for now, we'll just leave it there. In the next installment, we'll cover data compression, aka subsampling, and related topics such as points quantity. And then after that, we'll finish the series by covering TFM amplitude fidelity. If you enjoy the content, please hit those like and subscribe buttons down below. Uh, take care, and we'll catch up real soon.